Well, you've got me over a barrel this time. Hello and welcome to Intoxicated Masculinity. If it's Wednesday, we have a cocktail video coming at you. In this case, something a little bit different from a cocktail video, but sort of cocktail adjacent. It's been about one year since we did our last barrel dump. We put one gallon of Evan Williams White Label in this barrel. Uh, we did it for two years. Um, interestingly enough, the proof going in was 100 because it's bottled in bond. Coming out, it was, I think, about uh, 135. So again, it's a pretty significant amount of proof over the aging process. Obviously lost a lot. Um, so a year ago, or actually just a little over a year ago, I put uh, a gallon of Dorley's uh, Five Year in there. Um, going off of bourbon and going into rum, because I think it's going to be kind of interesting. Um, in this case, I, uh, this has been in here a year. I didn't want to go two years because I kind of felt with this run that two years might be a little bit too much on it. Um, but, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this barrel. Um, I'm going to fast forward through or kind of skip through that a little bit because you don't want just this pouring out. Uh, but then we're going to test the proof and we are also going to test it versus this, which I didn't have an extra bottle. So this is just regular Dorley's five, uh, Dorley's five year that came out of here because for some reason my empty bottles seem to disappear and I don't quite know why. But um, So we're gonna dump this into here and we will try, we will again proof it and we will test these against each other and just see what that does, see what the difference in, in flavors are. It's big massive dumps. One thing that's interesting, just sort of dumping, the, as, as this is, is dumping out, um, getting a lot of sweetness off here, a lot of vanilla. Um, it's not all vanilla. Now remember, this has been used to age bourbon twice. Uh, so when we did our barrel dump, we dumped uh, two years worth of Evan Williams White Label. Uh, before that, we did two years of Old Crow. Um, so this has had bourbon in it for four years. It's now had rum for one year. So this is definitely, well, I'm gonna say definitely, this is very likely gonna be picking up some bourbon notes. Uh, and we'll just see kind of how much. Also, one thing we're going to see once I actually compare these side by side, this is a lot darker, significantly darker. Um, one of the things with these smaller barrels is you get a lot more surface area. Uh, and that's something that's a little complicated. Some places and distilleries will tell you that if you age something in smaller barrels, um, it ages faster. That is definitely not true. Um, increased surface area imparts more uh, wood notes faster, but it doesn't necessarily increase maturation. Um, anybody who knows uh, bourbons especially, it's very easy to tell a bourbon that has acquired uh, the oak of an older bourbon, but hasn't acquired the maturation of it. It's still you still get grain notes, it's just grain notes with wood on top of it. Using my very, very technical process uh, for labeling here. It's a good idea to do this because you'll forget uh, stuff like this. All right, so we filled up uh, a 175, and uh, the thing I should have thought more about this uh, is typically when I do this, I don't get this much out of it, but this was only aging for one year instead of two years. So we definitely are gonna be getting more, uh, more uh, age distillate out of here. Um, but since we still got more in here, and I'm gonna empty the rest of this later on, because I kinda get to the, the proofing and tasting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up my little, uh, vial here and we're going to test the proof on this now for the record this go this went into the barrel at just 80 proof this is a 40 percent alcohol by volume and we're going to see if it gained anything uh, in the throughout the, the aging process typically when i age things in this barrel i gain proof all right pull up 250 milliliters so we're going to get our hydrometer in there and you can buy these online just to kind of mess with on your own if you want to. I wanted to get it to kind of, kind of steady out. So it looks like, very bad eyes. Um, it looks to me like we ended up right around 105 proof, I think. Right. Sometimes it's a good idea to pull it out and people with dirty minds don't say anything. To, to give it another shot, just to kind of uh, give it a chance to even out, maybe do a couple of these. Um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, adjust that. I think it's right at around 100 proof. 
Um, so this definitely, definitely gained some proof uh, in the barrel. Because like I said, this went in at 100, or excuse me, went in at 80 proof and came out at 100. So, next thing we're gonna do, again, I know this is not the bottle that came out, but this is our Duralise, just regular Duralise five year. So this is exactly what went into that, what went into that barrel. And, I'm pour just a little bit of what came out. And uh, one thing you'll notice when you're looking at, at various uh, distilled products, it, it takes more to sort of see color usually. Uh, two whiskeys or rums or bourbons or anything else uh, that come out. If you're only looking at a very little bit, generally speaking, you're not gonna see colors easily. Uh, but here, even with this tiny quantity, you can very much tell this is a lot darker. So we're gonna nose just our regular uh, Duralise fire. It's very, very much what you expect. It's a little vanilla-y. Uh, Duralise five years is a really good mixer. I mean, I think you can sip it too, um, but it doesn't it, it doesn't bring over sweetness like a lot of rums do, especially aged rums do. Um, it's gonna go really well into any kind of mixed drink where you wanna put a, a dark rum in there. It's gonna hold up, but it's not overly bold. All right, now our age, our, our Duralee is six year. I mean, right off the bat, it's hotter. Definitely getting a lot more sweetness. Now remember, there's no sweetness added to this. I didn't add any sugar in aging. They didn't add any sugar, at least to my knowledge, uh, throughout uh, their process. So any sweetness we're getting is coming entirely from the barrel. And also, kind of as I said, this was originally uh, used to age uh, bourbon twice for, for two years apiece, four years of bourbon. Uh, bourbon is a very sweet spirit, so it probably did pick up a fair amount of sweetness from that. So, let's taste it. Yeah, that's the release five year. Um, very inoffensive. Um, now this is not an expensive spirit at all. Um, I think Duralee's five year, the handle I think is around $26 or something like that. Um, a really, really great handle to have around again, just for mixed drinks. Um, I think you could sip this one. It probably wouldn't be in my top 10 <laughs> sipping rums, but uh, it's definitely not bad. Uh, and I, I wouldn't hate sipping this. Just, uh, you know, vanilla notes, maybe a little bit of wood influence there. Um, I would say a little simple, a, a sort of simple, not, not simple necessarily in a bad way, but not, not a complex rum. All right, now let's see what an extra year did for it. Wow. Um, so first of all, there's proof. Um, this is, again, this is 10% uh, hotter than this is and you taste that. Not in an unpleasant way, uh, but it is hotter. A um, lot of wood. Uh, I'm really glad I didn't leave this in there longer than a year. I think two years this would just be oak. Um, if you've ever tried certain whiskeys after they've been aged for what I would call too long, um, when you get into like the 20, 25 year uh, bourbons, um, a lot of those bourbons you just get that oak flavor and you don't get anything else. Um, and personally, I don't really like that. I think this is this is a this soaked up enough oak flavor to make it interesting and a little more complex. But I don't think it dominates entirely. The oak is there, but the oak comes in on the finish and kind of around the outside. That sort of on the palate rum is very similar to this but you've just got a little bit more character to it. A little hotter, a little sweeter, um, but when I say sweeter, again, in this case, I'm not talking like that sugary kind of uh, syrupy sweetness. This is like a natural sweetness. And again, let's pick that up uh, from both the oak and from the bourbon. Um, in case people don't understand, so when you age things in barrels like this, you don't get everything out. Um, so there's two things that basically happen through the process, through the process of the aging in a barrel like this. You get some of your spirit um, gets evaporated. Now, in most places, that's going to be more water than it is than it is alcohol, which is why the proof goes up. But on top of that, some of that spirit is going to stay inside the barrel. And when I say inside the barrel, I mean in the actual staves of the barrel. 
um, that's sometimes been referred to as the devil cut. The evaporated part is called the angel share. And so when you re-age something in here, um, as that as the spirit is aging in here, now here it's not getting much in the way of, of temperature changes because this is a climate controlled environment, but in, in a, in a non-climate controlled warehouse when it gets very hot the pores on the wood open up and uh, the spirit whatever it is whether it's rum or whiskey or whatever gets sucked into those staves and then when it gets cold uh, the uh, pores tighten back up and it spits the the whiskey back into the into the barrel um, but it doesn't do that with all of it so again even though this is a very climate cold controlled environment some of that whiskey is still in these staves so when you age it you're going to get some of that bourbon um, here, I don't think the bourbon is taking over. I think you can you can taste a little bit of that bourbon, just kind of a little bit along the edges, uh, but mostly this just tastes like a more complex and kind of more fun to sip rum. Yeah, I could sip this for longer than I probably should. Um, yeah, I highly recommend this. Uh, I would recommend going for a little bit bigger barrels. For example, you can have these barrels like this. This is probably... I don't know, maybe 750 milliliters, something like that, but probably close to the equivalent of a, of a, of a bottle. Um, I don't like these as much. Here I feel like you're getting too much surface contact with the wood, so you're getting nothing but wood and very little maturation. I think this, this is a gallon. Uh, a gallon is a pretty good, um, a pretty good compromise, because I think you are getting more surface contact with the whiskey, um, or rum in this case, um, but it's not it's not taking over. So I think a gallon to two gallon is a really good sort of middle ground. Um, plus, remember if you're aging, you're gonna have to buy enough to fill that up. Um, so in this case, you don't have to buy handles to fill this up. Um, I wouldn't, I would not do this with expensive spirits. And I probably mentioned this the last time, because um, you know, you're, gonna, you're gonna pay a lot of money to fill this up and you're not gonna get it all back out because you're gonna get, as I said, devil's cut in the staves, angel's share just evaporated into the, into the air. Um, that being said, I think this is, this is a lot of fun. It's, it's a good idea to take a spirit that you don't uh, maybe are interested in uh, and that isn't super expensive and do this and you can really get some interesting interesting results. Uh, again, last year we talked about the Evan Williams White Label. I've still got some of the Old Crow that I aged in here prior to that. Um, and it's, it's a good time. It's a good time to sort of, you know, see, see what that barrel does to the spirit. But, on that bombshell. Wait a minute! All right, one last very important piece of information that I remembered before I finished recording. Uh, if you have a barrel that you've been aging something in, it is very, very important. Once you're done aging in that barrel, you need to fill that barrel back up. Now, if you don't have a spirit you want to put in there right now, that's fine. You can just fill it up with water. Uh, if you can do reverse osmosis water or distilled water, that's probably a little better. Uh, but you don't want barrels to sit empty because they will dry out. Uh, if you have a dry barrel, there is a way to sort of uh, revitalize those and I might do a video about that at some point uh, but yeah so if you do a big barrel dump like uh, for example for this barrel dump I don't have anything else that I'm putting in there right now I've got a few ideas I'm working with uh, but you want to make sure put some water in there make sure that barrel stays nice and and moist on the inside and doesn't dry out dumps I want to thank everybody for watching please like share and subscribe have a good drink and have a good day